person where they do evil, no one make person talk. Hmm. Them say that my egun, that man do they talk. He do they talk. Say my egun diary, he they hot like pepper. But every day, then they tip money in buck. One man picking, they the street, they hawk. Still them talk, say, make we not talk. But thank God, say, my egun don't come. So my people make you laugh. Like, oh, yo, yo, my egun don't come. Oh, yo, yo. Good morning to you, good afternoon to you, good evening to you from wherever you are watching from. And this is Mayegun Live. So, share the broadcast. Thank you very much. Read and share, invite others and tell them. Very Facebook. And yes, we like you. Very YouTube. And yes, we like you. Oh, Baba, they will And yes, we like you. Thank you very much. Eka Leo. Good evening to you. Good morning to you. Good afternoon to you from wherever you are watching from. And this is Mayegun Live. If you have read the caption of the broadcasts, you can make your own contribution accord I mean, accordingly. And at some point, I am also going to open the line for everyone who possibly want to contribute to this, this evening and tonight, our conversation is going to be on questions that we are likely never going to get answer to. But at the same time, being on Mayegun's diary political, we will keep it in the diary. A lot of things are going on underneath this issue of Oloye Sunday Igbo. And I think it is right on time for all of us, the Yorubas and the lovers of Yoruba people and the Yoruba land, to actually take a decisive step. And I will take you through this, this evening. Last year, December 2021, we had a conversation about uh, the legal representation of Oloye Sunday Igbo in Bene Republic. A situation that is so dark and dicey that uh, it has reached a legal lockjam. Oloye Sunday Igbo, 
committed no crime, found himself in the hands of the Beninois authority who said initially that they were holding him simply because they received same requests from Nigeria that he should be arrested if he's found or if he's ever found in their country. Well, that is kind of plausible. That is, if Oloye Sunday Ibuwo has any case or any criminal case whatsoever in Nigeria, none. This was how we got to know the lawyer to Oloye Sunday Ibuwo, a Yoruba Beninois lawyer, who suddenly came to limelight because he represented Oloye Sunday Ibuwo when Benin Republic's courts were still opening. Somehow and somehow, the courts stopped opening. No court case, no court date, but this man speaks for Oloye Sunday Igbo. And this January 2022, something happened that gave us an insight into what is expected to be a solid legal representation for Oloye Sunday Igbo, not just him, including the Yoruba nation activists or agitators or advocators, as you would like to call them. We saw a picture of how this was going on when one of the supposed lawyers to or representing Oloye Sunday Igbo, Barista Olajen Gbesi, came out and he made a statement that actually write so many people up that he didn't have such authorization. Then this Bene Republic lawyer came in to say he's uh, responsible. That if nobody can speak for Oloye Sunday because he's the legal representative or what have you for Oloye Sunday Igbo, even without giving us anything at all. I'm coming to that too. Then who hired him? He said Ilanomo Udua hired him. So for six straight months, all we had from Bene Republic were dead graveyard silence. Except for once in a while, sound bites from this lawyer. Who is paying him? What are they paying him for? What service exactly? I mean, these are curious questions I was asking myself until the news came today again. I personally know from those I believe are closer to Oloye Sunday Igbo, on two occasions I have been kind of privileged to speak to Oloye Sunday Igbo himself right from the Benin Republic detention. Part of our questions from the word go was that what exactly is Benin Republic holding Igbo for? So that we can know what is the work of Igbo's lawyer. Because you must, you can't say that I arrested somebody and I'm representing him when the government that is holding him are not, in fact, presenting any case. That is one. For six months, we didn't hear anything. But this man is uh, representing Igbo. But underneath, behind the scene, people are going beyond law the lawyer, going beyond the legal world of view. People are going far and beyond to see if they can use diplomatic or whatever means to persuade the Benin Republic government that even if you acted on behalf of Nigeria to this day, you have been waiting for Nigeria to, to provide evidence of what they are looking for, what they are actually looking for, a go for, so to say. And they have not provided any. You are holding an innocent man, and you can't give us a reason why you are holding him, right? Illegally. So somehow they started getting some sort of a green light, which became public. I mean, if you hold somebody for six months and you said somebody said you should hold him and you have been holding him and you have been waiting for the person who told you to hold him, 
And there was never even a primary, a written uh, government statement that said, we are going to hold Igbo for six months, but we have a lawyer representing Igbo that gives us nothing. That's the point I'm trying to make. This person gives us nothing, nothing substantial, but he, he claimed to hold the absolute legal representation of Igbo, and I'm still coming to that too. Then the news came and they said, this lawyer, Ali Yu, from Benin Republic, you know him, he's a popular face now on social media because he represents Sunday Igbo. Before then, we have no track record of his. We don't know who he is. Nobody has an idea of who he was before he was uh, appointed Igbo's lawyer. And among all Igbo's legal representatives, in this issue of uh, Nigeria hunting him or we shunting him, it is only been a republic that we have never gotten any results, any legal whatsoever results. In Nigeria, those who are legally representing the Yoruba nation uh, uh, activists, they have recorded uh, what do you call legal successes that are the base that we, be, we believe, we thought, would be good enough for being a republic lawyer. Yeah? To say, listen, Benin Republic, the man you are holding, he actually has no case in Nigeria. In fact, Nigeria is owing him not right now. Nigeria is owing him uh, 20.2 billion uh, naira because he had no case. We, it's only been a Republic that we have never received any good news legally. But this guy, whenever anything pops up in Nigeria, this guy will counter it and claim he represents Sunday Igbo. Again, I'm still coming fully to that. Then he came out and he said, Benin Republic has extended the Bowo's detention by six months. He has been paid. I remember one time, there's this particular phone call that Oloye Songde Bowo had with uh, some of the people who are closer to him, who speak to him. And in that conversation, he was angry. He was upset. He said, they locked me up here. These guys who claim to be my lawyers, I don't even know what they are doing. Except for people who call me from outside to say, we are trying this, we are trying that. This guy, I don't know what he's doing. He was upset. He was angry. I, do, I know many of you have actually heard that audio. So, personally, and this is why, if you ask me, my ego... What is your concern? Aha! I will tell you why. It's always been my concern, by the way. When Oluye Sunday Igbo came out to raise the alarm of the level of uh, insecurity in or uh, the northern part of uh, your state, and he brought us the proof, and he also said, most especially all of you abroad, thinking that when you make your money, you are coming to invest it here. Think about your safety and security. Yoruba land is no longer safe because what our people are going through. In fact, look at this, look at that. If you want the safety in Yoruba land, you all must rise up and support us while we defend the Yoruba land. Igbo shouldn't have come to the picture if your political leaders were responsible. I mean, if they were indeed responsible, they were irresponsible people, right? That was how Igbo came into the picture. He cried unto us. We raised over 50 million naira in support of uh, the protection and the awareness of why Yoruba should defend ourselves, the protection of Yoruba land. You saw all of that that time. That was how we got involved. We were not just talking. We were interested in acting. Non-violent self-defense. Listen, no, self-defense is, uh, is a universal human right. If your family or your loved one comes under any attack and you have any little thing to defend yourself, it is your right to defend yourself. It will cried out unto us and we responded. That's on record. Now, because it will cried out to us and it will put his everything on the line, mock him, laugh at him, you know, say whatever you want to say about him is on record. 
that it was because he raised the alarm. Not just that, and he also put action into his words. It became the target of Nigerian government. Not just Nigerian government, Nigerian political class, Yoruba political class. That is also on record. Now they locked him up. We are here in the diaspora asking, what is going on? How far? Oh, we are doing our best. We are working on it. In fact, we have just uh, got we just got this lawyer. Oh, we just got that. Oh, we have written a petition. Oh, we have sent this to uh, international criminal. We have, you know, but there is no clear, clear, clear explanation of what they are actually fighting and any progress at all. So here we are. We are still abroad, though. All of you are still adjusting your travel plan to Nigeria. Why? Because you know that if you don't plan your security, eh, your story will become one of those who will have to share on my Egun's diary political, as example. Igbo is locked up. Laugh, mock, do whatever you think is that makes you feel good. But if, if he wasn't there, is somebody that hand the trust of many, many, many of us in the diaspora. When the politicians, the criminals you have in power, when they choose to turn your misery into money making, he, he came out, we saw the genuity in him, we responded, and we responded massively, which now exposed him as somebody who have the capacity to mobilize the people, to believe in a single cause, a cause that they can call ours, no matter their differences, no matter where they come from. In Yoruba Lando, he had that capacity to say, let's do it. And people will say, yeah, let's do it. Nobody cares about uh, his education. Nobody cares about uh, his uh, whatever you want to ch check on him. But his sincerity about the cause, that he could put his life on the line, caught our attention. We saw the sincerity and we followed it. Now he's locked up. Rather than everybody to put the resources together genuinely to get him out, what I figured out is that some are actually turning it into their own money-making machine. As long as Igbowe is locked up, it is a free money for so many people in this call for Yoruba Nation, Yoruba this and that. If you check right now, when you look at those who are always up there, a year ago, Jekomo, Jekomo, Igbo Wosha, Igbo Wosha, peaceful protests here and there. And they all had these great ideas of Yoruba nation. The moment the man that made their content more valuable, yeah? The moment he got locked up, they ran out of that uh, content. And what do we have today? the silence of the graveyard, or accusation, this one is this, this one is that. We couldn't, none of them could rally their resources together to save Igbo. And that is what I figured out. Because it's only been a republic that we never got any news. It is money-making machine for many of them. And there are so many things I would like to say, but I won't say them. So that it won't look like I am actually coming here to run them out of business. I am not coming to run you out of business as not that. But if we remaining in detention, and many of us expecting those who have possibly turned it into money-making machine to do something better, and at the same time blackmailing people that could do better, listen, we can do better. And God damn the I blackmail, whatever they're going to call it. This is why I said it in December. I said, when Igbo said, we needed equipment, we needed vehicles, we needed this and that to be able to navigate the interior part of our forest, go after these illegal aliens, and at the same time, keep our communities safe. When he called out, he got our response. Now, we have a lawyer or a group of lawyers from Benin Republic who now just told us that Benin Republic has extended the Bowo's detention 
for another six months. Why are the Ilanomo Udua? Ilanomo Udua. Why are they not que que asking him for that uh, written evidence? Because according to him, there is still no allegation against Igbo why they are holding him. Okay? At the same time, there is no evidence from Nigeria that he committed a crime and they wanted him in Nigeria. These two reasons are non-existent, right? But this lawyer came out to tell us that uh, the, uh, the Benin Republic has extended the detention of Igbo for another six months. No reason, no evidence, no nothing. That's another six months of pay. He is getting paid. So the elders in bed, I mean, in Ilanomo Udua, if you are watching me, I am saying this to you now, that uh, if all of us are going to be very sincere, until Oloye Sunday Igbo got involved in the issue of uh, Fulani adsmen and the Fulani terrorist invasion of Yoruba land, the danger of kidnapping and ransom payments, communities being ransacked, and at the same time, villagers empty, I mean, running away into different villages not to return to those uh, lands anymore. All of these are underreported by the political class because politically, it is never going to favor anyone who come out to publicly say Fulani terrorists are terrorizing our people. We have evidence. Until Igbo came into the picture, Yoruba nation and the agitation for Yoruba nation did not mean so much as it means to many people today. It didn't mean that much to them. Igbo's effect in the agitation for Yoruba nation, that is the reason why it got mixed up with the agitation for Yoruba nation, because he's asking for the safety, self-defense, and protection of Yoruba land. And he was saying this, say, he said he had no intention of uh, fighting anyone. His intention is to keep the Yoruba land safe from these illegal aliens, armed terrorists, that Nigeria continue to give leverage to, or should we say, uh, immunity to, while our people are living in total fear. Igbo got involved. And that was how Yoruba nation, agitation for it, became even more popular. And not many people who are currently, uh, you know, agitating for Yoruba nation after listening to Igbo, after seeing the effort of the Sunday Igbo, after seeing the effort of uh, those who were with him as well, those who are currently championing Yoruba nation, Yoruba nation, many of them didn't even know that uh, you, uh, Oloye Sunday Igbo is, is never a, a, a executive member, a director, or any kind of a leader in leadership of uh, Ilanomo Udua is not in any of their leadership capacity. But his love for Yoruba land that prompted him to leave all his own comfort zone to expose the rot that could put you out of your own comfort zones as well if you should become a victim. That was what propelled him. That was what made him what he is today. And therefore, and that is how we are going to treat him. Oloye Sunday Igbo is Omo Yoruba Atata. There are so many of you, if you value what sacrifice he pays or he is currently paying, including those who paid supreme prices, those who got killed in his house, right? You will embrace them than they, than run around or run after the rogues that orchestrated this man on this witch on this this profiling and these killings right so we will deal with igbo but we will deal with uh, igbo's issue differently now this been a republic lawyer this is this are, i'm going to give you my own ideas now the way we are going to go about this and put this nonsense to hand once and for all and for those of us who actually supported the lawyer sunday igbo and we do anything legally possible to get this on real track, right? I'm going to give you suggestions. 
we are going to make suggestions on this program tonight, okay? And we are going to put action to that suggestion, but something will have to trigger something before we get to that stage. First of all, I am going to arrange a possible conversation somehow with Oloye Sunday Igbo. I bet I have been told that Oloye Sunday Igbo will have access to watch my videos, especially the time when uh, Barrister Olaje Ngbesi came out to give a statement last year, and I think it was a Christmas or New Year statement, purportedly from Oloye Sunday Igbo, where he, he looked like Oloye Sunday Igbo was asking for truth with uh, Nigerian government. This got to the wrong side of the leadership of Ilanomo Odua, and they reacted. In fact, this Aliyu, Salami Aliyu lawyer, also reacted. So when I took up uh, the news and I spoke about it, Oloye Sunday Igbo was said to have uh, also watched the broadcast. Oloye, if you are watching this video, you and I, we need to talk. And this is what I'm going to ask you. I don't know who is genuinely paying salami. Uh, you, have, uh, you have been paying for your legal representation from your paws, as far as I know. And the Lanomo Udua, they have also been uh, forthcoming when it comes to the legal stuff. But as we speak, Oloye, this lawyer from Bene Republic, if the collective of my people on this program tonight, we are not many, but we are very significant, very, very significant and powerful. It depends on who is asking or who is looking. Omar Yegun's direct diary political from the Yorubas in diaspora, the friends of Mayegun and the friends of Oloye, we are going to ask our for I mean we are going to ask for our involvement in this whole legal thing. We want to give it a new direction in this way. We want to know if you are going to be comfortable to tell Salami that uh, his service is no longer needed. I know this message I'm, I'm sending right now is going to trigger many people and it's going to trigger many reactions. I don't give a damn about that. Okay? If Oloye Sunday we will get to see this, as well as uh, when I finally find, I mean, get to speak to him, which I'm going to bring the evidence to all of you. Then we are going to start something called uh, a general crowdfunding where we are all going to agree to approach a better legal team that are indeed going to take Bene Republic. They're going to take them to task. Whatever this corrupt legal system they have in Africa, the one that has kept, uh, you know, corrupt people to keep being in power by trampling upon the right of uh, innocent people, which is the same almost everywhere in Africa. Whatever that arrangement is, we want answers. And we need people who can actually dig it out and get us the answers. In this case, we are going to launch a 25 million naira crowdfunding, legal aid, for the case of Oluye Sunday Igbo. Whatever it's going to take, whoever it's going to take, and how long it's going to take, how fast it's going to take, but we will not be able to do it if Igbo feels otherwise. That, oh, guys, you are just overreacting. Don't worry. It is not that bad. The lawyer is doing a great job. Just pray for me. If you both turn around to say that, then that would be us. Just to what? Wish him well and wish everyone well as well. This time around, we are no longer going to beat around the bush. We are no longer going to ask anybody for permission. We will speak directly to Igbo. We will ask for his permission. I'll bring the evidence here. And then we will launch a 25 million legal aid, whereby we also launch a general call for service. Yorubas have 60 million people all over the world. You're all watching me right now. Many of you are going to see me later. Some of you are going to digest this message later. But listen to me very carefully. It will be a shame that out of, even if Nigeria is lawless, eh, it will be a shame that we cannot find the first-class lawyers. They should name their price. They should tell us what it's going to cost. We will start with 25 million, like I said. It would be a shame that we cannot find 